And I like crypto, but I would prefer it if we had the central bank printing. It feels for crypto very much like the setup in 2020 in March when uh, we sold off really hard, failed to make a new low versus the low a year and a half, a year and a bit ago prior, uh, and then took off. We haven't made a new low. We've thrown a war at crypto. We've thrown um, you know, Chinese bans. We've thrown um, all sorts of stuff, 8% inflation, a uh, central bank with an expected eight rate rises, which is never going to happen. Um, and crypto didn't make a new low. So I think there's a signal there, but again, we need to watch it. I don't think that's the bet, bet to put all your money in right now. I'm, all of my money's in it, but um, but I am adding to these other trades. Um, the crypto situation gets interesting, I think, as people start to realize that at sovereign level, this becomes a solution for them too. And the rise of central bank digital currencies, they're moving away from the SWIFT system, that's all coming into this game. Now, if this flares up further with Poland and NATO and Russia, I mean, th there's no way they can justify having that reliance. So that's a complication. There are side deals that we cut. Russia and Germany um, have direct pipelines. There's, you know, again, I don't know but we need to be very cautious of how this plays out. Um, so that's the carbon situation because, you know, carbon credits has been a trade that I've been in for a while. They've had a huge sell off. I, I actually quite like it, but again, it's much less clear at this situation. So I will give you that. I don't really, I'm not sure. Bonds, I think are a decent bet. Gold for the reasons we've talked about are a decent bet. Long term, I think it plays into what crypto is and means in this world. A distributed network that's not owned by anybody but owned by everybody is almost priceless in a situation like this. The dollar is a big risk here. So if you get a liquidity squeeze, the dollar goes up. The dollar is the one thing that I'm looking at, but we also know that the Fed try and stop that because they know the dollar is the wrecking ball. They can't let the dollar go up too fast. So they start supplying the world's, uh, the world's banks with swap lines. So every time they've done that in the past, it's eased the issue. But here you've taken out a very big economy. I mean, Russia's gigantic. Russia probably has more natural resources than the rest of the world added together. It's something of that magnitude. So the GDP may not be big, but its asset base is enormous. And without that in the world, we end up with a huge loss of trade. And we've also got these dollar liquidity issues, which I think will bite the Europeans, uh, bite the US and bite everybody else. So I think that's all setting up to be a bit of a mess. The Fed will come in and try and flood the market with swap lines. So the money printers start in different ways. And I know there's a lot of people watching this call, that's not money printing. It's enough to start changing the denominator effect of certain assets. So be cautious of that one. I actually like bonds in this environment because if you raise food and fuel and input costs, you're destroying demand. We've already seen demand slowing globally. We're already seeing a lot of forward looking indicators. I've written a lot in in it and I, I wrote it up in the GMI that you all got I think everybody got it there's so some of my thinking about all of that and I've been writing about that frequently in, in GMI and um, um, Macro Pro as well to talk about how that's playing out but it's playing out exactly as expected the world is starting to slow down uh, the US is starting to slow down bond yields are starting to come off and I think even with higher prices I know everyone thinks it's inflation I think there's a massive tightening of monetary conditions and total demand destruction on lower middle class households so I think that is a big problem coming and I think bonds should fall in yield and you know right now US bonds are a safe haven so the safe haven flows that come into that as well equities can rally um, if they finish the invasion and then something we get some clarity. Clarity is what markets want. Is it going to go into World War Three or not is what we're trying to grapple with right now. If not, that's okay. Markets could rally. Then they have to deal with the recession coming. The markets sell off again for that quite possibly. So it's not very clear. Equity markets are troublesome. I've been waiting to, uh, to buy tech and I don't think we can get there until we start to see the monetary spigots opening up again. And I think they will come and I think they'll come in form of transfer payments. Don't forget, transfer payments was the new genie that came out of the bottle in COVID, is they could give direct monetary handouts to people as opposed to just blanket fiscal stimulus by cutting taxes. And I think they're going to have to do that here because people are going to get really hurt by the situation of food prices and fuel prices. Now, can you trade commodities? Can you, can you expect them to go further? The hard thing is we don't know. A resolution that half of these commodities are down 50% in minutes so it's a really difficult world to try and own them and volatility is high so it's hard to own
calls. So to make sense of the world, buying commodities doesn't feel like a good bet. The ramification of the high commodities, which is slowing growth, makes, makes bonds a good bet. The ramifications of the weaponizing of reserves makes gold a good bet. The dollar is a generally quite a good bet it's on a massively key level against the euro. I've been tweeting about this. If it breaks the kind of 109, 108 level, I mean, it's going down to 80 cents. I think that's probably likely over time, but I think the central banks will step in first to try and slow it. If Russia hadn't invaded, then I would have seen a reversion. But now I just think the world's going to have to deal with having to find new supply chains. In that scenario one, I think there's going to be a weakening in sanctions on Russian commodities. So they'll they'll sanction them on a bunch of stuff, but they'll say through the back door, listen, we need the we need the copper, we need the nickel, we need the oil, we need the gas, which is a bit of a shit show, but that's that's kind of I think the state of the world. It just depends how much, how tough Europe will be on this and how much pain it will take, which again is I think it's fiscal. So once we start seeing fiscal stimulus, obviously risk assets tend to outperform because the denominator falls. Everything has a shifting probability and we just need to be on top of the news flow. It's another thing to remember with news flow. There's an enormous amount of propaganda from every side. So you don't know the truth and you will never know the truth. You'll never know whether Russia is exactly meeting its plan or whether every tank is falling apart because it's ancient and the Russians have no will to fight. All of that is propaganda. What the truth is, no one knows. Um, and it's usually a bit of both. So to just again, keep your filter up. Just filter it out and just look at the top level. You know, where are things moving? What is going? Without trying to be too clever in making assertions, because I've seen many people blow up their entire p &L by thinking they know what's going on when really they don't. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.